What's your biggest red flags? Living off his partner, don't have a car, don't have a job, broke, can't dress, don't have a gun. Wait, don't have, that's, wait, what do you mean I don't have a gun? <laughs> like Second Amendment, like who gonna protect me? <laughs> okay, and then I hate a man who know they work because that just is aggravating. <laughs> but I'm gonna stop there, so. I sentence you to 500 lashes. And she was doing so well in the beginning. You know, it's almost as if she was saying to herself, you know, I'm sounding a little bit too logical right now with everything I'm saying. I gotta add a little bit delusion. This ought to do it. After Brittany Griner played her first WNBA game since coming home from prison in Russia, the Phoenix Mercury head coach was angry that Los Angeles couldn't sell out the arena for her return. But this makes it seem like they had a choice. And in all fairness, if you offered people a free WNBA ticket or a crisp $1 bill, they are all taking the dollar. I mean, it was, it was great, but like, honestly, come on, LA. Like, we didn't sell the arena for BG. Like, I expected more, you know, to be honest, right? Like, it was great, it was loud, but um, how, was, how was it not a sellout? How was it not a sellout? Um, the fact that she genuinely does not understand, did not understand, why was it not a sellout? How was this arena not packed to the brim lets you know the lack of awareness she has and the delusion she's living in and the harsh reality is that the WNBA really just keeps on trying to get people to come watch their games and convince people to come watch their games pretty much for every reason other than the reason it should be which is because you have a good product that's entertaining and worth spending money on they're telling you that you should succumb watch them play because you should support women's sports it's the right thing to do they're telling you you should go watch them play because britney griner's back and she's worth going to watch and listen this doesn't really have anything to do with britney griner because we know the wnba has been dealing with these issues far long before britney griner ever stepped foot on a wnba floor and began playing basketball in that league don't tell me it's the marketing don't tell me it's because they're you're not giving them a chance if something is worth watching in today's day and age, especially with things going viral, with how much access there is to creating new content, if something is worth watching, people are going to find it. That's just the fact of the matter. See, this is why I don't be liking men, right? Because I start being nice to one guy and then all of a sudden I feel like he thinks that I'm a lame because I liked him back. And what the fuck was I supposed to do? Hey, hey, how you doing? Is he like eight years old? Okay. Yeah. Six. Yeah, I mean. He going to school. I'm just trying to drop him off at school. I can't really. I don't. I'm not supposed to take kids that are below six, eight years old. Well, he ain't. Come on, please. I'm trying to take him to school. He's going to be late. He literally got to be in school at 10 minutes. So he should please make an exception. My car's in the shop and I can't take him. I mean, I don't want to get a ticket. You're not going to get a ticket. He's going to put on his seatbelt. Yeah, but he needs a car. Like a, no, he please. I nah, do it all the time. I've been doing it for nah, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't. I will tip you. Nah, I can't, I can't. I can't. So you're going to be late for school because you're going to get, you're not. I'm, I can't get a ticket. Four minutes away. I can't get a ticket. Because he don't have a, I can go get a, his car seat out my garage if you really need a car seat. Yeah, I need a car seat. Yeah. Hey, hey, no, 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 no. No, 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 please, I'm sorry, please. I will tip you. I no, 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 it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. I don't want no, I don't want no complaints. Do you have any problems? I just really need to get him to school. This is going to be a third day being late, please. No, I can't, I can't, I can't. Yes. I can't. I'm telling you, he has a heartbeat. All right. Come on, like, why does that have to be so complicated? Nah, because I don't want no complaints. Well, I'm about to complain a lift right well, now. Well, that's, that's cool. Okay, bitch. Cool. That's You know, I always find it strange why there are just some people who think that you should put yourself into a dangerous or unnecessary situation because of something they did. If he's going, if that kid is going to be late, he's going to be late because of a whole bunch of stuff that took place prior before he got into that car. And to expect this man to break the law because you're running short on time, I'm just like, what are you really thinking? Because yeah, you could say that 
what are the chances between where he's at right now and getting the child to the destination that he's actually going to get pulled over? And they might be potentially low, but there's still that potential risk. And I'm pretty sure if he does get pulled over and gets a ticket, she's not going to then feel obligated to pay that ticket off because it's not in her name. I forgot how useless men are nowadays. I remember a couple weeks ago, um, my car wouldn't start and it was the most annoying thing ever because it was 3 a.m. We just got out of a party, like we're tired, just want to go home. My car wouldn't start. So naturally, I call every guy that I know that's in the greater Cincinnati area, right? Half of them were asleep, so I'm not mad at them. But of those that were awake, either they didn't have jumper cables or they didn't know what to do or they didn't know how to do it, blah, 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 blah. Now, I'm not one for gender roles, but come on now. Is this who we are? And maybe asking Kobe, what about your girlfriends? All my girlfriends were in the car. So I need the men that I know and they did not come through. And now I'm sick of men and these. Listen, if you can't laugh at a clip like this, then I don't know. I just thought this was hilarious because what it really kind of shows you is just how there are still a lot of women out there who just don't get men. They don't understand men. They don't know how men think. Because understand this, the fact that she thinks she was going to just be able to hit up a random guy in her phone book whether it was guys that she had placed in the friend zone and she was expecting to come to her rescue or if it was guys who she had already let dig decimate dismantle and destroy her guts in the past who she thought were gonna come save her that really doesn't matter because really if a guy really cared enough he would have found some way to get out there and help her out is Google nowadays and you can YouTube anything and everybody knows somebody who owns jumper cables and really the cold harsh reality that she may not want to accept is that the men she's dealing with have already relegated her to a certain status of woman based on their interactions with her and based on those interactions she is not the kind of woman who they will get out the bed and go help out for him in the morning on the side of the road. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, guys. So this was Rolo's tweet. So I'm going to read it real quick for y'all. Uh, the quickest path to becoming a high value man. Number one, do not get married. Number two, avoid family creation. Number three, vasectomy in your 20s. Oh. Number four, lift consistently. Vasectomy. Number five, eliminate all sedations. Number six, learn game and networking. Number seven, play to your strengths and build wealth. Mm -hmm. And then number eight, resist easing up on your focus. Um, By the way, when I'm putting out the idea of a vasectomy, okay, keep it, keep it coming because I love, I love that one. But um, if there was, if there was a uh, a male birth control pill, I probably would have put that in there as well because what the, that that one section in there was meant to say is that be aware of like when the sperm leaves your body, you lose all power over like over paternity and children and everything else. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that really slows guys down. It keeps, it's a, uh, it's a hindrance right, to becoming, to, to getting up to, to becoming a high value guy. Now nah, I can't rock with that. <laughs> this has to be said. When we get to a point where men are suggesting and telling other guys the fastest way to get to being a high value man that go out there and get a vasectomy because then you don't have to worry about getting a woman pregnant. You can still be reckless you, because a vasectomy does not protect you from STDs. And ultimately what it sounds like you're telling men is that, hey, in every other area of life, be disciplined, be focused, chase after what you wanna chase after, stay on your grind, your purpose. But in that area, you don't need to be disciplined. Go out and just do what you want. But guys, then there's this perspective. In order to be a high value man, you must exercise sexual discipline. Sexual discipline is the one, is one of the most critical areas to where men who could be high value have ruined themselves. What does that mean? You got kids everywhere. One, two, three, four, five kids by four women. You're not high value. Oh, we're going there tonight. That's why I say people who are music, uh, athletics or entertainment are not at automatically put in a high value care uh, category because their money comes differently. Number one and number two, because star, because so many of them tend to lack sexual discipline. Less than 10% of your time needs to be devoted to dealing with women. When you're a single man, you need to be spending 90, 95% or more of your time or 93% or more of your time on your purpose. 7% for women. But see, far too many guys out there be like, man, I wish I could be doing what you do, man. If I was in the letter and doing what you do, I'd be cutting and do, I'd be doing. And that's why you're never going to be nothing, never going to go nowhere. Because how much is enough? 
like it. And really, after watching those two clips, I hope something you was able to really gather for yourself was just being able to recognize when somebody's trying to tell you what you want to hear versus when someone is telling you something you need to hear. And those are two very different things because because in that first clip, what Rolo Tomasi pretty much was saying, it sounded like he was trying to tell men what he thought they wanted to hear. Turns out that a lot of guys didn't agree with them. There was a lot of people who gave him a lot of backlash for that, but it sounds like he kind of said that statement, whether it was tongue in cheek or whatever, because maybe he thought, hey, this is what men want to hear. Then you had Kevin Samuel speak from perspective where he said, listen, I don't care if this is what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, because if you want to become this caliber of man, this is what it's going to take. Surprising my husband for date night. Told him to pick out an outfit. Looks like she knows how to show her appreciation and wants to show her man a good time. So guys, there you have it. As always, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Always appreciate everybody sharing their thoughts. You've been enjoying the content. Hit the like and subscribe button for more. And as always, until next time.